Hello, this is the first part of the 2020 Oxford PAP. So it looks like the same setup as before. We've got 26 questions, so slightly more questions. Still can use calculators, uh, starting off with some multiple choice, which is what I'll do in this video. All much the same, really. So question one, stable isotopes of carbon, nitrogen and oxygen are all of those seven options. Which of these are true? Carbon-13 has a larger number of protons than carbon-12. Well, no, they've got the same number. That's why they're both carbon. Does nitrogen-15 have a larger mass than nitrogen-14? Yep, it's got an extra um, neutron. Oxygen-16 has a larger nuclear charge than nitrogen-15. Yep, it's got the extra proton. Does oxygen-18 have larger mass per unit charge? So is 18 over 8 greater than 12 over 6? Yes, it is. Does nitrogen-14 have a larger number of neutrons than carbon-13? What we got? 7 and 7. So no. So we got 2, 3, 4, which is C. Okie dokie. Triangle ABC has vertices at 0, 1, 1, 2, minus 1, 2. It's reflected in the line Y equals X, then rotated 90 degrees clockwise at the origin. Which single transformation? Right, I'm going to have to draw this to see what's going on. So we've got 0, 1, 1, 2, minus 1, 2. OK, so we've got a triangle like that. Reflecting Y equals X is going to give us that, that, that. Rotate clockwise is going to give us that, 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 which is the same as reflecting in the x-axis, which is B. Cool. Which ammeter gives the highest reading? So we want to have the lowest resistance on a branch because they've all got the same potential difference. So we've got 1.4, 1.3. That's going to be 1.6 recurring. So it's going to be D. Same old thing with the circuit ones. They're always really quick. Solve this. OK, so right. Well, we can combine those and then do an anti-log on it. So we'll have X times 2X plus 3 equals 2. 2X squared plus 3X minus 2 is 0. This looks it's got B written all over it, but let's factorise. 2X minus 1 x plus 2 equals 0 x can't be minus 2 because we can't have a negative going in there so well either of them actually so x is gonna have to be a half which is b yeah it looked like as soon as that appeared with that 2 there it's kind of had a look about it if the gravitational field strength at the earth's surface is ge okay 10 newtons per kilogram at a distance greater r so a further distance from the center we've dropped off to a fifth what is the radius of r e in terms of r so well the force is proportional to one over r squared so if we've gone down by a factor of five it's going to have to be root five for the radius so that's d these have been ri ridiculously easy so far oh this looks more fun consider the function y equals sine 100 over x Hmm. Angle is in degrees, so that sine 180 is zero. Well, it would be if it's in degrees. How many maxima occur for x is greater than 0.1? Hmm. All right, let's interrogate x a little bit. So when x is 0 0.1, we're going to have y is a sine of, what's that, 1,000. And as x increases, we're going to go to, what's the extreme then? We're going to get sine of zero. So x is going to take, well, the 100 over x will take all values from 0 to 1,000. So where do we get maxima in, in degrees? We're going to get one at 90 degrees. Then we're going to get one, well, 360 later. So 450. Then 360 after that is 810. And then we're out of range. So it's going to be 3. Excellent. What is the order from shortest to longest of wavelengths of peak EM emission? Right, electric torch, although depending on what they've made the bulb out of, because if you've got filament bulbs, they don't emit mostly invisible. It's only like 5% or something. But let's say it's some LED one. Let's say that's visible. Microwave is obviously microwave. 
radioactive that's going to be short let's go gamma if it was a gamma emission um hot cooking stove infrared well radio's got radio written in it we want to go from shortest to longest so it's going to be three one four two five no she's the first one which is a right now we've got a particle of type x decays equal probability in either to yy or zz both of those are stable right two decays are observed right pair of y particles is found amongst the decay products what's the probability that a pair of z particles is among those decay ah this is the old goat prod um question but i can't remember what it has to do with goats uh, it's the one where you've got so you've got four possibilities we're either going to a pair of y's and then another pair of y's or a y then a z then a z then a y or a z then a z so there are our four possibilities that we've got but they're ruling out that bottom one so well what's the chance of us getting a z in the ones that remain and it's then yeah it's going to be um two-thirds so yeah they had a game it's a game show thing isn't it where you've got three boxes and you have to pick one of them and then they ask you if you want to change your mind or something like that is that what it had to do with a goat like one option had a goat in it and they show you've got a goat a prize and an empty box something like that and then they reveal you pick one of them they ask you they then reveal the empty box and ask you if you want to swap or something like that and it's better if you do it's I don't know, it's got something to do with a goat and it's based on this probability. I can't remember exactly the story about the goat now. That's uh, drifting a little off topic there. Ten students need to complete their compulsory practicals for their high school examinations as detailed in the table below. Right, so we've got two of them need to do one, four to do two and four to do three. OK, the school has only one lab in which several different experiments can be set up simultaneously. A maximum of six students are allowed in the school's lab for a lesson. Each practical takes one lesson. What's the minimum number of lessons? Right, so how many practicals have we got here? We got two, then we got eight, then we got 12. So we've got 22 all in all. We can do six at a time. Yeah. So, well, on the face of it, that's going to be four. But I suppose we need to make sure that they can all fit in so that we're not going to get two people turning up on the same day. So if we've got we want to do four days so we've got four rows split into six bits and that means is that six bits one two three four five six oh, i've done too many bits let's chop off there get rid of that bit so we've got say we we're going to do the four students doing three so that'd be on three days we'd have four of them so that would be our four times three that would be all of that then we've got two lots here to do four so we could do a four times one there that would be half of that but then we couldn't do well we could do three of them there one of them there and then the other two we can fit in or what would fit in there and we'd have these two empty slots so yeah we can easily tessellate those 22 practicals into four days so that's going to be b so yeah quite nice nice something a bit different What's the next number in the sequence? 37, 41, 43, 47, 53, 59. Right, that's not looking at what the gaps then. So we've got four, two, four, six, six. Huh. Uh, that doesn't look very good in terms of gaps. There's no pattern there. There, what else can we say about them? Well, they're odd numbers. But they're not all the odd numbers. Got some number in the 60s coming up. What am I missing here? There's. No, I can't see this at all. Is there something in these differences that I'm missing? 42466. Six. No, because that's messed up. Odd numbers. What odd numbers have they not got? They've not got 39, 45. Oh, yeah, they're all ending in seven. Yeah, they've left out the five. These are primes, aren't they? Right, OK, took me a while to see that. I'm not used to seeing these primes in in uh, 
61's prime, isn't it? Obviously, it's not going to be that one or that one or that one. So, yes, yeah, 61. Yeah, it doesn't divide anything. So, yeah, it's going to be A. Yeah, it took me a while to see that. Right, yeah, that's a bit of a sneaky one. So, yeah, if you don't see it, you don't see it. A stone of average diameter 10 centimetres is hit with a hammer and split into pieces. Every time the stone or one of its pieces is hit, it splits into three further pieces of equal volume and similar shape. How many hits will it take before a piece reaches the size of an atom? Oh, my word. Right, so the volume is, well, it's obviously proportional to the cube of the diameter. So we're going down. Yeah, it's split into three pieces. So the volume's going down by three. So the diameter is going down by the cube root of three. We need to get, I mean, a diameter of an atom is around about 10 to the minus 10 meters, give or take. So we need to go, and we started at 0 0.1. So we need to do 0 0.1 times what well, will be three to the minus n over three just changing this one over the root of three into a minus a third and that will have to be equal to 10 to the minus 10 right so we have to do some logs then on all of this aren't we so what we got on this we got the 10 to the minus nine no 10 to the uh what am i doing here yeah multiply that through so 10 to the 9 is going to be equal to um 3n over 3 so we need that n is 3 times log to base 3 of 10 to the 9 right so need the calculator for the first time on this so what have we got we've got the Three times, where's that? I never use this this particular button. Right, log to base three of ten to the power of nine gives fifty six point six. So fifty six, fifty seven, something like that. What were our options? Our option. Oh wow, D. So yeah, D's come out pretty close to that. So. Yeah, that was a horrible question as well. So they've thrown in nine, uh, 10 and 11 have been a bit sneaky. The last one then, question 12. We've got the graph below shows a function f of x. Right, if a is a constant such that a is less than b but greater than zero. Right, so identify the sketch that is that. Right, so we, well, we know we have to end up being, well, we've got a shift in the x direction and we've got a reflection in the y direction right so that's already going to rule out that one that one and that one so we've got a choice between d and e really because they're the only ones that fit in with that so it's the question of are we uh, trying to we're trying to keep track of these minus signs really are we shifting it to the left or are we shifting it to the right what would happen then if we had so when x is zero, when x is zero, x equals zero, we're going to have minus f of a, and we know that a is somewhere around here, so it's not going to be zero. So it's going to have to be e, because d is given going through the origin there, and that saves me having to think about doing the uh, the transformations and which direction it's moving in. Right, that was also a sneaky one at the end. Right, so that's the, the multiple choice questions done. I'd say on that we had nine easy questions and then three tricky questions. So, but overall, not bad. I think this was a moderately quick bunch. So uh, back in the next video.